Okay, I'm, I'm going to start. I, I understand that this was completely out of schedule, so there is not many people. So I guess half of the people already saw the previous presentations, so I'm not going to try and repeat myself a lot. Uh, so there is this project, oops, there's this project uh, 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 pushed by NetApp, I work for NetApp, that uh, they want a file system in user mode, a user mode server that gives you a file system because uh, the languages that it is written in and the libraries that it's using and the licensing and all those stuff are, are in, do not permit it to run in, inside the kernel. It's a very big uh, file system. But on the other hand, they don't, we don't want to, it's a uh, persistent memory based. And so we don't want to pay the penalty of, of the user modes the user mode interfaces that we currently know, specifically Fuse and any other IPC are too slow and too copy happy. So therefore, zero copy user mode file system. <coughs> so the, the, good news, uh, the good news and the bad news. So the good news is that it actually works. It's, uh, it's been released to clients, as a be to beta clients, uh, last week. And it actually survives the whole suit of XFS tests uh, and the whole suit of NFS torture, uh, um, meta torture tests that they have developed for the last 20 years. And it's a pretty steady, pretty hard uh, system by now. It, uh, there is not a lot of missing features, in, and including uh, corporate features like snapshots and, and, and mirroring on another node and all kind of Global namespace. It's a it's a w one big product, and it's all run under this project that I'm presenting here. So it, uh, we, we are negotiating with with Red Hat to actually include the the modules, the open source modules, with Red Hat. And uh, all the source code. That I'm go all this stuff that I'm going to present is all open source. You can go download it, hack it, whatever you want. The bad news is that we want it upstream. And uh, compared to any, all the t any of the talks that I uh, saw I in, uh, here in Plumbers, this is a very big, it's a much, much bigger piece of code. It's a, it's a complex code. There is a lot of systems. There is a lot of, you know, like internals that are being done and tricks. And so to actually get it ready for upstream and have everyone approve and not step on anybody's toes, uh, I hope when we step on their toes, they, they yell so I know. And so this is the bad news. Uh, how, um, uh, you know, how we check that the versions match between the components, how we package the dependencies. So, so uh, I'm going to go, I try to go very quickly on the architecture, and, but if you want more, then tell me. Uh, if you have any question, just raise your hand and ask. Uh, don't let it run away. It, it, in the principle, we see a kernel. So the ZooFS is built from a, a Zoof component, which is a zero copy user mode feeder, 
this is the kernel component, and then and then in the in user mode, it it has a, a Zeus, a zero copy user mode server component, and um, this Zeus server is uh, is presented under a system D, Zeus D. So it's a system D uh, loads on boot up uh, service. And so all these are open source. The, the, the squares at the bottom, these are uh, vendor components that plug in. And um, these, uh, these components are loadable libraries. And there is a registry, a very simple registry, where you say what, which file system types do I support? Now, each plugin can actually export as many file types that he wants. So dash t uh, foo, dash t bar, dash t me, you know, any files, uh, file system types. And th so, and this, uh, so this immediately, everything, that, th the way it is built, it, uh, everything is mirrored. So any object that you have in the kernel is you have actually an object in user space. And so, so th the first thing that happens is that the, the, the zoo fruit loads. Zoo fruit is, is a very meaningful, minimum file system that you can open files against and, uh, and do special IO controls. So it's just, uh, the file system there is not a real file system. It doesn't serve any files. It's just an interface to, to the core of the server of the core of the fuzz of the operation. Uh, the, the, the daemon, now all this system can repeat. So it, for efficiency, we want one of these in the system. But let's say I have a plugin that is not ready, is not hardened. I, I don't want uh, Ceph bugs to, to interfere with, with, you know, with, with a solid XFS files not an XFS, XFS has it in kernel, but some other hardened file system, then I can, and they, and they all run in the same address space. So I can actually duplicate the daemons. All I have to do is give the, the daemon on the command line where is my root. So the default root loads on slash li slash fs slash zoof, but then you, if you, mount a root on another on another path and just give the daemon an another path you have the whole system duplicated so you it's 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 less good for performance but it's better for isolation and so so once you w you once you establish a, a, a communication there is a m the first thing that happens is just there is a mount thread that once that goes into the kernel, sleeps into the kernel, and waits for a mount command. The regular mount command comes in, and the mount thread goes into the file system type, into the plugin that registered that file system, and tells it, okay, let's mount. And so now the super block is created, is parsed, uh, uh, we'll see how you access your data. And, and, and every super block is belongs to a root. So if a super block wants to talk to its component in user mode, it goes through the root, it, go, it, it, it takes a communication channel and, and then it's dispatched in user, in, in, in application land, it's dispatched to the correct vector of operation. Now the novelty of the whole project is these ZT threads, uh, these uh, ZU threads, ZTs, ZTs. And so the, the, what happens is that when a, a file system call, let's zoom in, we have a zoom in on this. Uh, the use case. So, so I, th I, th I, th I, th I thought I t touched that, but so the use case is that we have a, a, a very big file system that cannot run in the kernel. 
but we still want uh, to interface it in the in, com in the complete POSIX regular way, and ha it's actually like Fuse. It's the same use case as Fuse, but uh, but without paying the pen penalty of copying and and uh, and latency and the bad communicate bad user mode kernel communication channels that exists today. So, b for instance, a Fuse uses pipes which are an order of a magnitude slower than the, than the communication paths that we've created, okay? So the, the, the use case is just speed, 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 performance, and also, so I wouldn't care about speed a, a lot if all these user mode uh, interfaces would scale. But what happens today is that they just don't scale. If I have 80 cores, 128 cores, 512 cores, you see that after four or five threads, you don't get more performance. With this system, you completely scale up to the number of CPUs you have on this in the system, okay? So here you see that uh, the kernel, uh, uh, Zoof is, is, is a model, is a VFS model, and the Zeus has its, uh, its libraries, its loadable libraries that are actually implementing the file system. So, per, uh, the, so the novelty here is the per CPU communication, and the per CPU communication enables us to do to be completely, completely lockless, completely memory barrier less. The o there, I there is one memory barrier that is done in the scheduler, but th that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Uh, that's not that bad. It's a it's a very narrow memory barrier, and uh, so the way it works is that the when the when the Demon is created, it creates a, th a, a number, n number of channels per CPU. So th b currently it's three. And th those, if, if an application comes on some CPU, goes through the VFS call, and arrives at the file system at some CPU uh, in, in the kernel, it will pick up the channel, the available channel of that CPU, and dispatch that on that CPU th it, on on this thread that, that it allocated into the into the into the user mode server. So in so because it's a pair CPU, so the actual ZT array, the thread. The, the, the ZT array in Zoof is actually a per CPU variable. It's, it's very simple coding. I mean, the kernel gives us all these facilities. And so when you, ac you do a get CPU and you access your per CPU variable, there is no locks, there is no, you do as simple if, you know, there is no synchronization, n nothing. And all the locality, the CPU locality are there. You go into the server, you, you dispatch the vector that you wanted, and you return with the results. You wake up the application and you return the results to the application. All this is done on the same CPU. And so, and, and, and in parallel, you can do a, a, all CPUs in, uh, together. Now, why three channels? So if we only had one channel, then the rule would be, and that was the, the original thought, the rule would be that you cannot s sleep on a ZT. Because if you sleep, that channel is taken and, you, and it's, there is no, you're losing, you're blocking that CPU for, for your use. And so you're not allowed to sleep, but not sleeping is hard. 
we don't know how to not sleep. There is no such coding paradigm of how do you not sleep? You know, it's, it's a very simple spin lock is asleep, you know, or in allocating memory and everything. So what we have is we, we have multiple channels. So, and, and also there, uh, currently there, there is a mechanism, but, but I have disabled it for now because it just, I found that it doesn't, I don't need it. It doesn't give me any benefits that I can actually add more channels. If the system, if there is 10,000 threads bombarding my file system, then I can add more channels. And, and, I, and if my file system is actually sleeping, then I can actually add more channels. But that didn't give me, in the benchmarks, in the synthetic benchmarks that I've done, it didn't give me any results. So the three was a good compromise where I'm, I'm not stuck without threads because imagine that the, imagine that there is um, 1,000 threads, there is tests like that in, in XFS test. There are 1,000 threads read the same block. And, the, and the now the block is waiting for, to be read from hard disk. So it's sleeping, waiting for the hard disk. Then there can be a, a, a problem where when the, the IO done path doesn't find an available ZT because all the ZTs are inside the server waiting on the lock of the block to be returned. So, so, so uh, in what I did, what we did in this case is that if, a, 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 if an IO operation starts and it needs to communicate with the, with the kernel to actually do things like read from hard disk, then that channel is only of, is locked for the completion of the IO. So there is all, you're guaranteed, you're always guaranteed to have a forward progress of, once you started the IO, you have a forward progress of your IO. And so this is, this is kind of advanced uh, stuff, but th the main thing here is that it's completely lockless, completely memory uh, uh, um, uh, barrierless, and that there is multiple channels exactly for the for the reason that I want to reserve. Once I start an operation, I want to reserve that channel for the completion of the of the operation. Okay, now another thing that is interesting, uh, there's, it's a big project, it's a really proud project. So there's a lot of, of components in this project that are by themselves a project in, in the kernel. For, for example, one thing is, is a device table. So if on, on the mount command, you, you say uh, this, file si this file system type, dash t, FooFS, uh, of this device uh, on this directory. Uh, what we actually do is, uh, as part of the registration, as, as pas part of the f uh, user mode file system type I uh, 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 information, we, we, t we tell the kernel where on the disk, if you get a disk, on at what offset of the disk you will find a device table. And, uh, and the device table, it's, uh, and the device table is just a table, a flat table that, that lists all the devices that belong to this file system. And w we see two types of, of devices. We see T1 devices, we, we, meaning uh, persistent memory devices or direct access devices, which which I know that are memory in the code, and then I have regular other regular block devices, so NVMe, iSCSI, whatever other uh, 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 T2 devices that are they do not uh, do not have direct access, and each device is also NUMA aware. Is especially in memory, in PMEM, I want to give the, the file system an information on which NUMA I'm working and what is the closest to you. Also, uh, T2 devices, imagine iSCSI 
which are over a NIC. So I actually, if I, com if I configure my system correctly, I, I, empty, I empty my memory to the nearest device instead of going cross NUMA uh, also on, on tiering. And so it also the, the, the kernel completely owns all the devices. So, so when you do an LS block, you, when you do a mount of a file system and you do an LS block, the LS block will show you, okay, all these devices, like, like in ButterFS, all these devices belong to this mount. So this is a very nice fe feature in, 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 user mode, in user mode admin that it can actually see. And, and also another big thing in, with, with this device table is that it doesn't matter which device. You can give any uh, a PMEM device that you have. Is there is up to 64 devices that you can put in a system, in, a, in, a, in a one super block. As any device that you give, it will always mount the same way. And if that device, if that super block is already mounted and it already has a directory, then it will automatically bind mount. This, this is, this, the, the bind mount is, is done automatically in, in Linux. It's if you mount on directory one and then use the same device you mount on directory two, it will just increment the reference of a super block and do a bind mount. So all this works. So it you can give any one of the devices of the 64 devices to the mount, it will automatically bind mount because it sees that it's already mounted. Uh, another uh, an, another job of the of the so this is the device table on disk, but there there is a, 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 a whole object in kernel that is called the MD the multi device, which uh, presents to the server a linear. It gives all the it, it all the PMEM that are listed. It gives it as a linear as a linear, um, a concat concatenated linear uh, space, and it, it, in with, w with a single mmap, the server can access the all PMEM in one, in a, through a single pointer. And, uh, and also with T2 is the, 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 the communication, the communication with the kernel when I want to write a regular block devices is I just give you an offset. I am this in this super block, right to this offset. And so a T2 means just an offset, uh, on offset in the device table. So, you know, and the d devices don't need to be in the same size. It's just a concatenation of, of space. And so this gives you a lot of uh, hardening. And, it's, and I can also check. It, it, you give me a, 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 a T1 address is also, actually a T1 address is also an offset. A T2 address is also an offset. So I can check you that you're not going out of bounds as a server, as a user mode server. I don't trust, trust you completely. So everything is checked. This is why this, the kernel knows all this information. It owns this information and it gives access for it to the server for to the. Also there is um, a check that you cannot a, a, a certain super block cannot access uh, devices that doesn't belong to its device table. So uh, 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 everything is uh, and it, it is tried to be hardened in this way. Um, another thing, another thing that is uh, very uh, uh, special here is uh, the zero copy inode. So the, I have all this inode info, you know, the inode number, the, the size, the times, the GID, UID, all these information, uh, they don't run on the line. They don't run on the communication. At the beginning of the, create of the load of the inode from disk, uh, uh, I look up, I get, or on creation, a new inode, uh, I get a, po a pointer directly to the to the Zeus inode, and the and the and the, and the protocol is that you can see the, the rule of operation is that inside the kernel I um, already know what it means to be a file system, so I update I update all the fields. 
I update all the fields here, and then I dispatch the operation. So let's for, let's, for instance, I do a write. I need to update the, the C time, M time. I update the C time, M time directly in, in, in persistent memory based file systems, I'm actually directly accessing persistent memory. And then I dispatch to the, to the user mode and the user mode can do a seal flush. If, it's, if it knows that it's, a, it's actually persistent memory, it needs to do a seal flush. Please update these cache lines to, to real uh, NVIDIAs. If it's, a, it's a, an ephemeral, if it's just an object, Let's say I'm an XFS file system that already has an on-disk format of its own, then we we're just, com com it's, it's, a, it's a shared memory object. So the, sh the shared memory object is uh, lifetime is exactly as the lifetime of the VFS inode. And f once we created that handshake, then we never copy this data back and forth. We completely work on directly on the on the on the object. Uh, this s the, uh, and also another thing that was there is a an uh, each each user mode object gives its pointer its user mode pointer to the kernel. Now for the kernel is just an, o an opaque handle. A, zoo, a struct Zeus inode undefined. Zeus inode pointer undefined. So it's for, for the kernel is just a pointer. It cannot it doesn't know what's in those fields. But every operation that I call into the server that operates on an inode, I give it the Zeus inode <coughs> info. And here, this is your you remember you gave it to me when we created the, the inode. Remember you you gave me a handle? This is your handle. So you we completely avoid any kind of inode hash tables and all kind of the operations that, that uh, fuse have of w what object am I working on? So th there is no looks, there is no, it's a complete pointer access. Um, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the opposite doesn't happen. The user mode doesn't give, doesn't tell the, s the, the kernel uh, there is a single case where the some th there is a single case where where the the user mode goes with an eye control and says I want to operate on this super block. So what happens that I have an SB key? The the kernel produces a, a cryptographic uh, a, a 64 cryptographic key and gives it to the mount of the super block. So only the super block that I was actually created on mount is able to access my resources, my super block resources in the kernel. But the opposite, the kernel can use, can hold pointers on the server easily. So, so the, the, the whole API, the whole co construction, there's, it's a lot of code, but, but the whole construction is the zero copy was very, actually simplifies code, by the way. Okay, so uh, we kind of uh, reached the, the end, I think. How do I uh, actually access a, how do I actually access a, my data from the server? So th there used to be, there used to be a version one of this uh, talk where we take you see the, the the purple or the pink uh, pages. So the application come with pages that it wants to read or write. What we used to do is that we used to map these pages into the server VMA, call the call the file call the file system, and the file system writes directly into application uh, pages. This is a beautiful novel. Um, a, a idea, but in practice the, it has a problem on Intel CPUs, which are the important, that the map and everything is very, very fast, but the unmap of these 
pages out of the VMA of the server so I can now map other pages, the unmap doesn't scale because the unmap has a list of all the threads that we were scheduled, all the CPUs that were scheduled since the, since the map. And it will schedule a CPU thread to shoot down the TLB. So in effect, every single IO schedules on, CP on all CPUs, so I'm completely killing my scalability. Because all of a sudden, I have this, this bottleneck of, of all, I need all the CPUs in order to do my IO, which is ex exactly against the idea of this. So uh, I tried to uh, do a patch. I tried to do a patch, a, a hacky patch of actually relieving, um, relieving this bottleneck. And the patch was saying, look, I know what I'm doing. The system is pretty hardened, is, is signed and everything. Here you have a flag that I'm telling you, don't schedule on other CPUs. None of the CPUs touch your mem this memory. Only one CPU touches memory. Just invalidate it on the single CPU. I promise you. But the kernel guys say, you can promise until tomorrow, but we are not taking that. There is no promises. If, if, if a, a, a malicious server can easily go copy the pointer somewhere else, and, and after you already p free the pages and gave it to another system, access it. Why? Because the TLB wasn't shoot down on the other CPU. So after uh, like an uphill ba uh, battle, th the solution w that was suggested that we need to do a true pair CPU variable in the kernel where we take in, uh, the hi hierarchy of the memory, uh, the, not at the very bottom page, but at, at the, the hierarchy above it, we take the very last entry and we switch it on, CPU, on pair CPU. So, so each CPU actually has uh, the very high address below the kernel addresses. The one of the very high address s automatically switched. So when I give you, so it's like a thread locale, but a CPU locale. But this is a lot of work, and it's and not only that it's a lot of work. It's it's okay. I've done all that work for Intel, and now. What about the other architectures? Am I not able to work on other architectures then? So we threw that uh, we threw that notion and uh, and we uh, and we devised a, a different uh, system. And so the system is so already already in the API of the old API, the version one API. Uh, there was a, a system of saying get block and the get block was used by mmap so give me the pmm block that belongs to the index of this file and it give so it gives me a t1 uh, a t1 a t1 address you know the, the below the top the t1 it gives me a dppt i'll i'll talk about the dppt in a second gives me a t1 uh, give me a t1 block and um, I will map it for the application. And then when the, when the, when the time comes, you, you do an unmap. And so there's already a, a get block, put block interface with a server. You know, give me your blocks. Now, if I already have a get block interface with a server, what I can do is just get the get block from the server, do the copy myself in kernel, and and put block. Okay, I'm done copying. Now, if I'm already kn if I already know the block, I have it at hand, then I can cache it. I can put it in an X array per inode. And so the next time you read the same block, I say, oh, it's already cached. I don't even have to go to the server, and I can copy it again. And so so it's it's. Uh, Instead of doing the, the mapping and all the, the TLB shootdowns and the problems we have, we're just using the get block uh, mechanism. And, and uh, the way this is built is that um, 
you have an array of, you have a pointer to an array of 64, uh, U64s that you receive from the kernel and you have a, a, all kind of operations. Can I have, is there a mouse that I can put over the, what did I do? Is there a mouse that I can put over, oh yeah. So what happens is that uh, the, the, the top eight bits tell me an operation so I can have up to two, 256 different operations, the 255. Uh, currently there is, uh, what, five of them. So, no, it's more because seven, eight of them. And so the eight bit tells me what is the operation and then I also have a 56 bit of a value. And then ac according to the operation, I might have more. So I have like these structures that tell me, please do s things. So for the get block operation, I want to write two megabytes. I will have a, a T1 op, a pointer, and then I might have a repeat. So the repeat is an operation by itself. The repeat tells me N. So here you have, let's say I have a, 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 a contiguous one megabyte in, in PMM. Then I give you, okay, you have, this is the address and, you, and it's repeated 256 times for one megabyte. Or if I have each 4K goes in a different place in the BMM, I just have like a, a, a scatter gather list. So this is like, a, what is IOMAP? IOMAP is just a scatter gather list on steroids. It's like, it's not only that it's a scatter gather list, it also tells you what I want to do with, with that information. So the, one, the first one, the, f the basic one is get, get block. Give me blocks to, to write to. The second one is T2 read. You remember we have T2 devices. We have regular block devices. So uh, um, I'm asking to, to read from, from this T2 into this T1 or to write from this T1 into this T2. Uh, uh, I, uh, this is the time to talk about DPPT. A, a, DTP, a DPPT is a dual port pointer type. So the dual, the dual port pointer type is actually a, an offset, but w an offset where it's an offset to some kind of pool, a me uh, some kind of memory pool. And it's an eight, but it's an eight byte aligned offset. So I have the very three lower bits. I have three. And so the very three lower bits uh, uh, encode um, encode a pool. And the, uh, the zeroest pool means my PMM devices. So my, my all PMM devices is a pool of, 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 of a linear address space. I give you an offset to that PMM. Please write from that offset because the kernel already has access to that PMM memory. Uh, another special pool is number seven, which tells you, uh, please write to the application buffers. So this is pool number seven. It, the content of this read directly into user buffers. So this is like direct IO of, of T2 devices. Um, and then the other uh, five pools that are left, six pools that are left, there is a mechanism to actually allocate a pool and have like a, a shared memory communication with a server. And so if it's not a PMM based server, it's, it, it's based on something else, or maybe it's even like a, a, an, a, an SQL server or a MongoDB server that wants to communicate via this very fast communication channel. It just emulates some file system interface Let's say when I write do SQL with this SQL query, then it, I get a query back. Then, then, um, then there's six, channel, th six other pools that we can establish between us of shared memory. So everywhere you see a DPPT. Also, also the inodes. You remember the inodes that we, we saw? They are DPPT. The, the shared inode objects. 
So, so every, everywhere, X, uh, X atars, soft links, all the objects that we know that are kind of like on the, on the, on the, on the file system side, but actually need access from the, from the, from the kernel. Uh, instead of of copying them on the I/O control on the interface, I'm just giving a PP, DPPT to them, and th and we're use, we're communicating through shared memory. Another another important um, another important uh, object is the Zeus mem read and write. Uh, so I I'm just actually giving you this runs in. A in the server context, so I can actually so the kernel has actual access to to the memory of the process of the server, and so I can write I can read and write internally into into server buffers, and that another operation uh, scatter gathers on steroids is unmap. Remember when we did get blocks? And we put and we cached them, or maybe we did mmap, and we put it on the application uh, virtual space. The server, at some point, says, "Look, I want to get rid of. I, I'm, I'm revoking the access from this block. It's, I'm revoking the access from this block, and if you want it again, you'll get a page a page fault." Or please remove it from, from your caching. Don't come to me f again if you want the index of this file. So, so this is done with the unmap, where, where I give you a page index in the file, an inode number, and a number of pages I want to unmap. And, and uh, so yeah, so this is the way, so this is the new way. The new way means the kernel is doing the copying and is using a get block, put block interface from the server that we already had instead of doing all this VMA mapping. It's less pretty, but uh, also an IO map can be asynchronously called from the server through an IO control, zoo, IOC, IO map execute. And s because let's say you have a, a background processes that go and say, okay, I'm going to take all these memories and I'm gonna post them to, uh, to hard drives and unmap them and you know, do you know, management, file system management, then th they, they can do it through that. So, so uh, sometimes, the kernel asks for an operation, and, it, and the result that it gets is an IO map. And sometimes the file system, on its own accord, saying, "Okay, do all these maintenance things in the background." Almost yeah, you actually, I think it's a, it's a thing. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. So we have like about two minutes for questions. Um, so uh, yes, yeah. please. Unless you open source, you know any specific uh, Zeus server, um, it seems rather unlikely that you will get the kernel parts upstream, right? Is there any? So, so there is a already two two examples of a of a fully functional file systems. Cool. Uh, one is a FUFS, which is like a real foolish file system, a really really foolish, straight one to one. Uh, API call to, to a file system. And then there is another one, which is a ToyFS, which is a more complete set of uh, implementations. And yes, please, I w I'm looking for, for implementers because, because I know that th this interface is good for me, but I haven't proven that it's generally good. So I want a, resiste a serious system, you know, like Ceph, he was uh, saying they're interested in all kind of network file systems. Uh, um, uh, Gluster said they were interested. So like to see, is my API mature enough? Do I, uh, can I supply all the functionality for you? 
you probably can't mention any, uh, you know, uh, features you are implementing uh, based on this at NetApp, right? This is all yeah. uh, non-disclosure stuff, right? Yeah, the, the NetApp file system is a very robust, complete featured file system, including you know, stuff like snapshots and things that some uh, uh, c uh, a cow, um, um, whatever you, I don't know, mirroring on other nodes, a lot of, it's a very, so yeah, so it's, and Xatars and ACLs and all these things, they are on the implemented. All right, so I think we're just about out of time. Um, so maybe if there are any other questions, people can uh, talk to Boaz uh, in the hallway. Yes, you have, yeah, and you have my email, and uh, write to me, and I'm sorry, uh, there is a, 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 a Git trees, there is already Git trees on GitHub. I hope to uh, put them in on the kernel.org soon enough. And GitHub is available, and, uh, and there's a mailing list. I just, th it's all kind of new. I don't know, I was like s busy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, uh, I, g I, don't, I just didn't bring that information. But uh, w email me, please email me. And, uh, and I will be glad. Up until now, I've been buried in the work and the stability and the bugs and things. Now I'm finally feel it's mature and I want to address the public. Okay, all right. So this is the right time. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.